I think it's fair to say that Mexico is the most successful national team out of CONCACAF. They have the most Gold Cup titles, the best World Cup record and overall larger amount of world class players across the entire football history. Nevertheless, during the last couple of years Mexico have witnessed a dramatic downfall. Not only were they eliminated in the group stage of the last World Cup despite having Saudi Arabia and Poland as their direct competition, but they have also failed to replace their old stars. And with the current rise of teams like the USA, Canada and even Panama, Mexico's future as a top dog in that region is seriously in jeopardy. But how could a team who always stood their ground against the very best drop off so badly? Well in this video I'm going to detail the exact reasons behind their tragic downfall and as a disclaimer, don't stay until the last part if you get easily offended. But before we start, if this isn't the first time watching this channel, please consider subscribing. With your help, we've already achieved 2000 subscribers and now it's time to aim at 10,000. Now without further ado, let's get right to it. To start this off, I'll just get the obvious reason out of the way. The terrible, absolutely disastrous management of League MX. 18 teams compete in two mini seasons, Apertura from July to December and Clausura from January to May. But dividing the season isn't the issue. The problem is that the league hosts a playoff at the end of each mini season where 10 out of 18 teams can still be crowned champions. But it was even worse last year as 12 out of 18 teams competed in the Clausura playoffs and ultimately Tigres who had finished in 7th place and 15 points behind the leaders in the standings ended up winning the Clausura season and the champions of champions trophy against the winners of the Apertura season. Does this sound fair to you? The league clearly doesn't benefit consistency, they only care about prolonging the season for as long as possible to make a buttload of cash with TV revenue. But wait, it gets worse. What do you think it happens to the bottom place teams? They get relegated, right? Nope. They don't go down with the excuse that no teams from the 2nd division have the facilities to play in League MX, but as a result of their bad performances, the bottom 3 teams are fined approximately 2 million dollars. So let me see if I understand the logic. You're sh so as a consequence you're gonna be fine so you can become even poorer. Even if the money goes to the best place teams from the second tier, it shouldn't come from already struggling sides. All of these nonsense rules plus the fact that the best teams aren't even competing in Copa Libertadores creates a mediocre environment for everyone involved. Obviously this weird structure hinders the development of Mexican players but the clubs are even greater culprits. Liga MX has the second largest rate of foreign players in the entire American continent only behind MLS and one of the oldest average ages of players. Bigger clubs rarely debut youngsters mostly leaving them loaned out in the second division. But then again, how do they expect them to develop and most importantly to remain motivated if they're in a league that no matter if you win or finish in 10th the outcome is still the same. And those young players are probably coming from decent backgrounds because the lower class kids no matter how skilled they are can play in a football academy due to the incredibly high fees. In fact, even if you're injured you have to continue paying to keep your place on the roster. It makes me wonder, how many talented future world class players were robbed of a future simply because they didn't have rich parents? Ultimately money really seems like the main cause behind their downfall. In fact, even the TV broadcasters have played a big role in Mexico's mediocre performances. Look, I hate to be the guy that spoils the fun for others but if you think players get called up to their national team due to their playing ability, you really need to open your eyes to the sad reality. In most cases agents play a big role on who gets called up and who doesn't but in Mexico's case it's their TV networks who influence who gets to wear their iconic green shirts. Older players like Herrera, Moreno and Ochoa are still playing because of their popularity. They keep people watching and they will be milked until they can't perform no more. You could argue that the replacements are still not up to par but if you're never gonna give those young players a chance to deal with the responsibility of representing your national team when it matters the most. How are they supposed to develop? But of course, I can't conclude this video without acknowledging the ultimate driving force of football, the players themselves. It feels good for the working class man to blame the executives on top, but what about the players? Those who reach the pinnacle of Mexican football are paid much better than the average South American footballer and that kills their ambition. I mean, why should they risk a career in Europe if they're already living well in their own country? This might sound harsh to hear, but I just don't see Mexican players as competitive or working individuals. Even when they're blessed with an ungodly amount of talent and opportunities by top clubs in Europe, they always seem to stagnate or fall off completely. 
The last world-class Mexican player was Rafa Marquez, and he left Europe in 2010. It has passed almost 15 years since a Mexican has played a big role in one of the best teams in the world, and a lot of the responsibility has to fall on the player's shoulders. In my opinion, if Mexico want to turn their fortunes around, they need to start investing more on their youth players. Not only lowering or removing the cost of tuition, but also focusing on developing a winner's mindset on their future stars. It's simply a matter of allocating the money into where it's most necessary, but who am I kidding? Corrupted businessmen couldn't care less about our sport. And that is it for the video. Do you know any other reasons beyond Mexico's poor form? If you do, make sure to leave them in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like so I know you want to watch more content like this and subscribe to never miss the most interesting football discussions, stories and top 10 lists. Thank you for watching until the end, I appreciate you and I will see you soon.